1946, third quarter, the period centered on world affairs. At the island of Bikini in the Pacific, a question. Could warships of today withstand the weapons of tomorrow? Fifteen. Ten. Five, four, three, two, one, fire! After the upheaval, military and naval experts assessed the damage to cruiser, submarine and aircraft carrier. But a watching world drew conclusions of its own. Somber conclusions. That peace must be made secure, or atomic warfare would destroy civilization itself. In Paris, safe from the blast, but not from its implications, statesmen met in conference. For the second time in a lifetime, men of many nations were peacemaking. This time, the problems left by war were a thousand times more urgent. Millions of people starving or existing on the verge of starvation. Millions of people homeless, wandering or waiting. Millions of prisoners, once enemies, now virtually slaves, waiting for repatriation. Millions of ex-enemies to be kept under watch. Then a dozen trouble spots. Countries where the struggle for government is open war, strife and bloodshed. To the Jews, Palestine is their traditional and spiritual home, the promised land, a haven from persecution. But the majority of the inhabitants of Palestine are Arabs. They too regard Palestine as their rightful home. Jewish immigrants have worked hard, have shown the British that they can build, farm, increase the productivity of the land. The Arabs, fearful of becoming a minority, persuaded the British to limit Jewish immigration. But with the end of the war, into Palestine ports came ship after ship crammed with illegal immigrants. Refugees from recent persecution in Germany, Austria, Poland, Belsen and Dachau. The pressure was so great that the British were forced to admit more than the agreed quota. But undammed at its source, the flood continued. Ships of Jews had to be diverted to Cyprus. Here the wanderers were lodged in hastily constructed camps. Impatient with delay and regarding Britain as their enemy, the Jews rioted against their guards. Meanwhile in Palestine, a reign of terror. Jewish extremists attacked British troops, wrecked government buildings, blew up trains and ships. The British were forced to act. In wide searches, they rounded up gangs of terrorists, unearthed vast hordes of illegal arms. But the fire raising and the bomb throwing went on. And so Palestine remains place of martial law 
where all go their ways only under watch, where the innocent must suffer with the guilty. items on the Paris agenda were the drawing up of peace treaties, the settling of urgent territorial disputes, in particular, Trieste. Trieste, claimed by both Italy and Yugoslavia, was the subject of bitter controversy. The great powers agreed upon a compromise, gave Trieste special status under international guarantee. The Yugoslav protests which followed coincided with the shooting down of American aircraft, with the loss of American lives. The problem of Trieste was by no means solved. The dominant note of the conference was disagreement, arguments over procedure and powers of veto. That there should never be a minority. Unless... Wide difference between the representatives of the great powers. At Lee for Britain. Burns for America. And Molotov for Soviet Russia. At the end of the conference, Mr. Burns, reporting to his president, spoke his mind. We are not trying to surround or smother the Soviet Union. As a result of the war, the Baltic states of Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia have been reincorporated into the USSR. The Polish frontier and the Finnish frontier have been substantially modified in Russia's favor. Königsberg, Bessarabia, Bukovina, Carpathia, Ruthenia are to be given to her. In the Pacific, the Kurilis, Port Arthur and Sakhalin have been assigned to her. Certainly, the Soviet Union is not a dispossessed or encircled nation. But America had her own disputes. With a great flash of publicity, Mr. Henry Wallace showed disapproval of his country's foreign policy by the tender of his resignation. the trial of key Nazis came to an end. The defendants had been given fair hearing, the evidence had been weighed, the judges of the nations had stated their verdict, the guilty had been sentenced. At Nuremberg, there was international agreement. Aggression was now established as a major crime. But did the Germans see it that way? At the close of the quarter, the Queen Elizabeth sailed into New York Harbour on her maiden voyage as a ship of peace. And from her stepped the delegates to yet another United Nations conference. Once again the foreign ministers met, once again a few men sat together, and once again all humanity awaited their decisions.